Okay, uh, welcome to this uh, class. Today uh, we're going to uh, consider indoor uh, localization uh, using uh, recursive uh, filters or recursive uh, estimations. Uh, to motivate this uh, lecture, I will begin with uh, some uh, scenario uh, some of you are familiar uh, with. So if you consider uh, the slides here, well, we, here in our uh, energy lab, we have different types of uh, robots and unmanned uh, aerial vehicles. Uh, we want these uh, entities to freely uh, navigate in uh, at the Faculty of Computer uh, Science so that they can undertake different uh, type of uh, assignments on their own. Uh, this necessitates, of course, uh, different types of uh, capacities. The, the, the robot should be able to uh, localize themselves without, uh, without the uh, assistance of uh, GPS because uh, GPS is inaccessible uh, indoors. Uh, they should be able to self-navigate, uh, avoid, recognize and avoid uh, obstacles, and of course discover uh, new uh, routes or the best uh, routes. Uh, in doing so, at the same time, we don't want them to consume uh, too much uh, computing and uh, energy. Uh, resources uh, because the, the main task of the, the robots for which they are developed is not to self-navigate but to do something but contingent to this they uh, have to uh, do self-navigation. Uh, In other words image-based uh, uh, localization uh, is not always the best uh, approach. That means we can and uh, should take uh, evidence from different uh, underlying uh, sensor uh, infrastructure, combine them, reduce error, and give the, the, the robot the confidence they need to uh, freely uh, move. Uh, here, for example, uh, we use ultra-wide band uh, radios uh, to uh, localize uh, the robot. Uh, the most important assignment in any estimation uh, uh, endeavor is to collect enough statistics. The first uh, thing is uh, collect uh, enough statistics about the different sources of errors. Uh, I'm going to uh, discuss them in, in more detail uh, later. Uh, pertaining to the uh, different sources of error. Okay, this error comes uh, 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 from different uh, uh, sources, and I, uh, I will show you uh, how to collect uh, statistics. The second uh, important aspect to uh, understand or to, to uh, remember is that we assume the existence of a reference uh, s measurement mechanism by which we uh, can evaluate our, our estimation uh, endeavor. So we assume that there is A reference system uh, to quantify the uh, quality of our uh, estimation. Okay, how good we have come to the uh, uh, aim. Uh, or how good we have approached the, the aim of estimation uh, is uh, quantified by using some reference uh, sensor. So if we go back to the uh, PowerPoint slide, uh, here for example, uh, we use an uh, ultra-wide band uh, radio to uh, self-localize this mobile robot, and we 
uh, deploy ultra wideband um, uh, receiver uh, transmitters uh, at the four corners of the, the energy lab. This uh, ultra wideband uh, uh, transmitters send uh, beacons uh, on a regular uh, interval. The uh, receiver on the the receiver on the on the robot here you see uh, measure the, the the time of arrival and uh, takes into account the difference in the time of arrival to self localize uh, itself. Uh, in order to uh, measure how accurate this uh, process is. Of course, we use uh, a leather belt uh, estimation uh, device uh, having uh, an accuracy of plus or minus 1.5 millimeters. This is a highly accurate uh, device, but we don't use this device always because it's not uh, convenient to use. So what we do, we uh, set in place an estimation um, system and then compare the, 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 the value of this uh, or the, the quality of this estimation system uh, to uh, tune model parameters. Uh, so the, the first uh, uh, step in, 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 in self-localization is, uh, as I said, to collect enough uh, statistics pertaining uh, to the different uh, sources of uh, error. So the first source of error it comes outside of our estimation realm. So the, the, uh, there are estimation errors belonging to the estimation realm, belonging to the, the, the mechanism we adopt to do estimation, and there are estimation errors which are outside of it. So we need to understand the, the significance of these two uh, estimation uh, errors to uh, meaningfully uh, address address them. So here, the, the, the first one is the, the error arising outside the estimation of course in, in, in some uh, context, we consider uh, the measurements set up, the robots driving and steering uh, set up as part of the estimation uh, mechanism. Uh, but from, from, from uh, addressing the problem of estimation uh, point of view, it's better to uh, regard what belongs to the, 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 the the algorithm and what falls outside of the algorithm. So for me, the, the error arising outside of the, the estimation algorithm uh, are two. So the first one is uh, the, uh, the error belonging to the, the robot itself, okay? When we develop an estimation algorithm, usually we don't develop only for a particular robot. Uh, you, for example, first used the custom-made uh, uh, robot, and then later on you shifted to another robot, right? But still, your, your algorithm was, uh, uh, other than fine-tuning some model parameters, still you use the same uh, uh, algorithm, right? That's what I am saying. So the error that belongs to the, the estimation mechanism needs fine tuning of the, 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 the algorithm, but there are errors which are outside of it. And one of these is the, the, the robot uh, itself, the, the, the robot, the, the, the error the robot introduces. For example, if you program the robot to drive at a constant velocity, it neither drives at a constant velocity nor in the direction you wish it to, to, to move. So here, for example, the driving setup, okay, and steering 
they introduce the, the, their own error. So the driving setup, for, as I said, if you configure the robot to move at a constant velocity, it does not move at that velocity precisely. If you uh, determine it to move at, along the x-axis, it may not move along the x-axis precisely. There is a deviation. So these errors belong to the, to, to the robot. Okay, we in general depict these errors as random variables ER. And this ER, it could be two-dimensional, it could be three-dimensional, depending on the, 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 the setting in which the robot moves. For uh, our case, for example, usually the robot moves in a two-dimensional space. So we don't specify the, the, the dimension, but in general, we depict it as ER. Let's assume for, for now, we are only interested in one-dimensional uh, estimation. Uh, and it's not a function of time because we assume that during navigation, the robot's uh, s s driving setup or inherent uh, hardware does not appreciably change. So uh, we, we can assume that it's not a part of the, the it's not a function of time. The second most important uh, error uh, uh, arising outside of the estimation mechanism is the measurement uh, setup itself. Okay, error Okay, again, uh, for some estimation, we may choose uh, UWB, like Chen is using. Uh, for another case, we can use uh, IMU. Uh, so different measurement setups introduce different types of measurement uh, errors. And this also we depict as a random variable, and uh, it's EM, and it's not a function of uh, uh, time. We wish that these are, you know, under normal circumstances, they are zero mean. That means most of the time uh, we wish to experience zero error in, in, in the uh, steering system or in the driving system or in the, in the measurement system. But uh, there are some, some, some subdivision. Uh, because now these two quantities are uh, random variables, they have to be fully explained by uh, a PDF. So these are measurable errors. Uh, that's the, the, the good thing about these random variables. Okay? The random variables both ER and EM are measurable. That's the good thing. And the, the, the other thing is that we can fully explain them by uh, using their probability density function. Okay, measurable and explainable using a probability density function. Okay, so for example, this is what we did in, in, in our lab. Uh, if we switch uh, to the uh, PowerPoint, here we want to model the, the, the driving, the error arising from the driving setup and from the steering uh, setup. So the robot here, as you can see, is uh, uh, configured to move in a straight line at a constant velocity. And after, some, uh, after it travels uh, a certain distance, we measure uh, how far it has come and whether or not it has been driving in a straight uh, line. So by taking repeated uh, experiment, we can collect enough statistics as to the, 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 the uh, PDF of the, the random uh, variable. 
So for example, here we, I, I, I'm showing you two different types of statistics. So the first one uh, uh, pertains to the forward movement of the robot. This forward movement determines whether or not the, the, uh, the, the, the robot was moving at a constant speed as it was configured. Obviously, you can see that there is a deviation in, in that. And the lateral movement here uh, describes the error arising from the steering uh, setup or the steering system of the, the robot. So here we have taken a large, uh, uh, or we have observed the, uh, the robot uh, long enough to collect uh, appreciable uh, statistics. So this is a very important uh, step. The second one, what we did was uh, at different uh, locations in our lab, we took also measurement pertaining to the uh, location of the robot using uh, USB. And these are the, the errors we, uh, we uh, established. Again, uh, we are interested in two-dimensional uh, estimation. So the, the deviation in the um, approximation of the location of the robot comes both in the y and in the x-axis. So this is uh, the, the, the one on the left side you see is the uh, error in the forward movement of the, the, the robot. We identify 25. Our lab uh, was approximately nine by six uh, meter, nine times six meter, uh, to be precise, around uh, 8.6 times uh, 5.8, I think, if I remember correctly. And we identified 25 uh, different points in, in the lab and took um, a measurement using the uh, UWB because the, the, the uh, accuracy of the UWB setup is location dependent. Then uh, we uh, took the uh, reference measurement to uh, measure the deviation of the UWB from the uh, reference system. And then we combine all the 25. For each uh, point, you took about 100, uh, 100 uh, samples. And altogether, we had 25 uh, samples. So this is about 2,500 uh, different samples. So we established both the x and the y uh, axis uh, errors. OK? So the, in both cases, we tried to establish the probability density uh, function. The probability density function assigns a measure of probability to the, the, the deviation uh, in, in meter or in centimeter or in millimeter. We did it in, in, in meter. So now here we have two type of errors outside of the, 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 the estimation uh, mechanism. Now when you choose an estimation mechanism, it also introduces its own error. And this inherently belongs to the, 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 the approach you have uh, identified. So I'm, a, I'm going to explain how this error uh, arises in recursive uh, estimation uh, techniques. OK? So error due to estimation. The error due to estimation is the following. So suppose. This is along, for now, from now on, orders, we are interested only in one dimensional uh, estimation. Uh, this is easily generalizable to uh, n dimensional uh, estimation, uh, but for the sake of simplicity, to make the, the mathematics uh, tractable, we focus only in one dimension. Okay, so this is x, and at the, the, the robot moves from a certain initial position, let's say, uh, x naught uh, up to time k, having uh, the position uh, x k, and we take this uh, at discrete time intervals. At discrete time intervals, we sample or we do estimation. Okay, at discrete time uh, interval, we do estimation. So this is at time k, k plus one, k minus one. So this is uh, 
uh, k is equal to 0. So this is the initial position of the, the robot. So by the time the robot arrives at this position, at xk, we have altogether collected k measurements. OK? Uh, actually, k plus 1 measurement if we include uh, k is equal to uh, 0. OK? We have this uh, uh, discrete uh, measurement. The position of the robot at this point is for us hidden. It's inaccessible. Okay, the actual position of the robot is inaccessible. We call it, it's a hidden variable. There is no measurement on Earth that gives you the actual position of the robot with 100% accuracy. And that is exactly the reason why we make estimation. The best estimation we can have at this point using our estimation uh, technique uh, is xk hat. So let's say the best estimation okay this is our best endeavor to actually estimate the position of the robot at time k. So there is an error, the overall estimation error. We call it the estimation error because of the, 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 the difference between these two. OK? And the goal of any estimation assignment is to minimize this error. OK? The goal. to minimize this error. So one thing common to all recursive filters, recursive filters is I'm speaking about Kalman filters, hidden Markov models, particle filters. Recursive filters are based on prediction. So a recursive filter function like this. Okay, recursive filters do the following. So this is k plus 1, xk, sorry, this is k, and this is k minus 1, okay? At time k minus 1, we assume that we have the best estimation, the best evidence we have, or we have combined. How it is combined, don't worry about it for now. Assume that at time this one, we have x hat of k minus 1. We have made an estimation. How it is done, don't worry. We don't care. So based on this evidence we have, this is the best evidence we have, we do prediction. OK? Based on this evidence, we predict. Let's depict this as x k of p. p stands here for prediction. k is the prediction is valid only for, 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 for time k. And x is the, the, the position of the, the robot. OK, we make prediction. Why do we make prediction? Based on one simple assumption. Based on the assumption that the robot does not make arbitrary moves based on this assumption. There is a correlation between the past position and the present position of the robot. So based on this assumption, there is 
a connection between the past and present position of the robot. We, we, we assume because there is a connection and because the, the, the robot does not make arbitrary moves, we can say that it is possible to make prediction xp of k. But when the time comes, when the actual k arrives, now we take measurements, either from U our uh, uh, UWP setup or with IMU setup or whatever sensor uh, we have at our uh, disposal. And let's depict that as k, z of k. Okay, this is the measurement at time k given xk. So let's just depict it as it is. So this is the measurement. Zk, this is the, the measurement coming from the sensor. Assuming that at k, the robot is in the position of xk. OK? Now, recursive, recursive filters. In order to get the best estimation, x k, x hat of k, this is the best estimation for, for, for k, try to find a function, okay, to try to find a function that mixes x p of k and z k. They try to mix the measurement with the prediction. And they try to find f in such a way that f is or f minimizes this error, the estimation error. The goal is to minimize the estimation error. So the goal of f to, to minimize e. OK? So remember, so far, we have four different types of errors. One of them I didn't directly address, but I'm going to address it now. OK, so far we have said we have ER. This is the error arising from the robot's inherent components, the driving and the steering setups. We have EM arising from the measurement setup. We have also EP. This is the, 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 the prediction error. It has two components. This has two components. Do you know what they are? The prediction has two, two components. Let's go back to this one. You remember here? I said at k minus 1, I make prediction about the position of the robot at k. Based on this evidence I have. But this evidence has some error itself, right? So the first component is. OK, the first component is due to the fact that I made my estimation based on uncertain knowledge I have. I made my prediction about the future based on uncertain knowledge of the present. OK, the first component 
is due to x k minus 1 hat, which contains error. OK, because of my uncertainty. This is the first one. The second one is because of ER itself, right? Even if I was 100% sure about the position of the robot at k minus 1, still because of the, the inherent components of the robots, it may still have mistakes, what we call the process error, right? So it has ER in it. As a result, this EP is a function of time. OK? So EP is a function of time. ER is not a function of time. EM is not a function of time. Still, it's not clear. This is a function of time because I accumulate error from the past. Is it okay with you? EP of t is a function of time. Now, the third problem, the third error here is, of course, E. E is the overall error. I have up to time k. The overall error I have up to time k is E. OK, so the goal of my estimation assignment is to minimize this error. Is everything so far OK? Good. Now we are ready to make, uh, uh, to put in place some of the mathematical uh, tools we have. But before that, uh, let me speak about the estimation assignment itself. OK, the estimation the estimation assignment can take place in the time domain. OK, in time domain, or it can take place in the, in the probability domain. Most of the time, recursive estimation techniques or re recursive estimations uh, do uh, estimation in the time domain. The reason is the following. Xk at time k, I told you, we have to estimate the position of k. The actual position of k the, the actual position of the robot is not a random variable. The robot just at, at time k, it can only be in one, in one location, right? Unless we go into a quantum realm uh, and say that you know, the, the, the electron can be in multiple locations at one time, uh, we, have, we are uh, reasonable to assume that at time k, the robot has a fixed position. Even if the robot had a fixed position because of these random variables, of course, xk, you remember, is xk plus e. And this e is a random variable. Because now xk contains a random variable, xk is by definition a random variable. Because a function of a random variable is automatically a random variable. That means xk contains some uncertainty. If it is uncertain, then at time k, the random variable is best explained by its probability distribution or its probability density function. Let's say it may have like this. So this is x, this is xk, 
and this is the probability. Okay, so this is p of xk, the probability density function. So either we can reason about the position of the robot in the time axis, or we can reason about in the probability domain. That big, the, the probability domain is easier to reason about because we always begin by establishing the statistics of these errors. The, the, any indoor localization endeavor begins with establishing the model statistics by observing how the robot derive, uh, drives, by taking measurement, and uh, establishing the error. And this automatically comes by mixing. I'm going to show you by mixing the different uh, models. So it's always reasonable to reason about the position of the robot using the probability density function. So we say at time k, by the time the k's decision arrives, we have made at least k plus 1 measurements, if we measure the initial position also, k measurements. So we have, we can say we have z0 to k measurements. Okay, this corresponds to Z0, Z1, Zk minus 1. So we have these measurements. By the time we, we are trying to determine the position of the robot at time k, we have these measurements. By this time also the robot has already assumed these positions. Okay, we call them states. We call them hidden, actually. And this is x0, x1, xk. OK? This is very important. Yes. E is the overall error we have a time k. And our error is the estimation. Yes, the estimation error. So is the, is the error of the estimation process? Yes, it is. OK, remember, uh, a time k, this is the position of the robot. It's hidden from us. We cannot grasp it. But the best estimation the, the algorithm can spit out is xk hat. This is the best estimation. For your case, your, this is the output of your Kalman filter. The difference between these two, this one we can establish using the reference system. So the, the difference between xk and x hat of k is the estimation error. Sk is absolute. It has no probability. It's just one value. Yes. But sk hat has? This one is a random variable. Okay. It has a variance, yes. OK. Now, because we want to reason about the, the probability in the probability domain, we depict the probability of x0 to k given z0 to k. This is the best, the, the, the PDF of x of x of k. We depict this as a PDF of xk. 
or this amounts to, or this is equivalent. Okay? This is equivalent. If we determine this PDF, this PDF simply says the following. What's the probability that the robot assigned the positions from x0 to k, given all the measurements? Okay? And this amounts to the, the sorry, this amounts to x, the, the, the PDF of x hat of k. Okay? The, the probability of zk given xk, this amounts to the measurement. Okay? The measurement. This amounts to the measurement. Another important concept is the following. If we have xk given xk minus 1, xk minus 2, x0, this means the probability of determining the position of the robot at time k, given all its past locations. But if I am given this position, if I know the position of the robot at k minus 1, I don't need all the others. I don't need all the others. So this can reduce using the Markov uh, condition as probability of xk given xk minus 1. This is an important uh, condition. Okay? This is the Markov condition. The Markov condition. Okay, so the, the, the most important assignment for us is this one. To get the optimal, this will be a PDF, and the point where it is maximum is where I assume if the robot is. That is where the error is minimum. The highest probability, the position yielding the highest probability at time k is assumed to be the position of the robot at that time. Okay, so far everything clear? All right, now once we have these things in place, we are ready to, to do some, to take advantage of Bayes' expression. Okay, we take advantage of Bayes' expression. what we do is the following. The probability of x given 0 to k, given all the measurements I have, z0 to k, is described by d0 to k, x0 to k, times probability of x0 to k, The mathematics is a little tedious, but in the end it will yield really comprehensible result. So probability of z 0 to k. <coughs> now, in order to comprehend the, the, the derivation, you need to understand the following. You need to understand my aim. So far we have said we have prediction. We have measurement. And we have the best estimation from the past. So these three components, remember. Three important 
components of my, ex est my estimation. The first one is the, the, the measurement. The pre OK, the measurement. The second one is the prediction. And the third one is my knowledge up to k minus 1. OK? During my estimation, in this formula, in this expression, I want to see these three components. That's, the, the, that's my aim of the estimation. My expression is complete if all the evidence I have are included in it. Otherwise, it's not complete. OK? This is the first one. So in recursive estimation, I am trying to this the in recursive estimation okay in recursive estimation the probability of x 0 to k given all the evidence up to 0 to k, I want to express this in terms of, I, I want to express this in terms of this. Some, some, some aspect, no, not even some aspects. We can make it explicit. I want to express this in terms of probability of measurement. Because we have said measurement should be included. Probability of prediction. And the knowledge of the past. Knowledge of the past is this one only up to k minus 1. OK? So this is probability of x 0 to k minus 1 given z 0 to k minus 1. I want to express this term. In terms of in terms of this one, or this one, in terms of this. Okay, this is the, this is my purpose. So we have to simplify this task to get this one product uh, p of measurement, p of prediction times p of the past. By the way, this implies that they are independent, right? When you multiply probability density functions, that means the, 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 they are independent. But let's see whether this is feasible. By the time I make prediction, there is no measurement. So it cannot be influenced by, by measurement. By the time I take measurement, the prediction has already been made. So it cannot influence my measurement. Or I can pick any measurement setup for that matter, any measurement device. Again, when I have the, the best knowledge, xk minus 1, these two are, were not available. So we can see that these three are statistically independent. They are statistically independent, and it makes sure to express them as to express their, uh, the, the overall probability density function as the product of the independent probability density functions. OK, so now let's try to describe this in the form of this, and I hope we will be successful. Since my, my aim is to combine measurement, prediction, and the uh, uh, best estimation of uh, k minus 1, I can describe this in the form of this one. To do that, I have to prepare it. So the probability of x 0 to k 
given g0 to k. This one I can distribute like this, probability of zk and z zk and z0 to k minus 1 given x0 to k. I, I just distribute the, the compact expression but did nothing. And this one I can also describe like probability of xk given x0 to k minus 1 times probability of x0 to k minus 1. I just expanded and did uh, nothing. Here I used uh, conditional uh, probability or conditional dependency to transform joint uh, density functions. And now we have the denominator. So this is probability of, I can also describe this as probability of zk given z0 to k minus 1 and probability of z0 to k minus 1. OK, now look. The measurement I take at time k and is independent of the measurements I have taken up to k minus 1. So I can describe these two as independent uh, probability density functions. So this one I can describe as probability of zk. And this zk, the measurement I take at time k, depends only on the actual position at time k. So this is x, xk, times the measurement I take up to time k minus 1 depends not on k, but up to 0 to k minus 1. So this is probability of z 0 k minus 1 given x 0 to k minus 1. These are the measurement, the measurements I took from 0 to k minus 1. Given that the robot was at this position from 0 to k minus 1. Likewise, the, the present position of the robot depends only the k minus 1 position because of the Markovian assumptions we put in, in place. So this one we describe as xk given xk minus 1. And now we have this one, probability of x 0 to k minus 1. And we divide this by probability of zk given z k minus 1 times probability of z 0 to k minus 1. Now we have to search for this condition, for these three conditions we mentioned, the measurement, the prediction, the knowledge up to k minus 1 in this expression. And the answer is we will find them. This one you see here is the measurement at time k. OK, this is the measurement at k. And this one here, probability of xk given xk minus 1, is the prediction. The prediction I make for k being in the state, assuming being in the state k minus 1. OK? Okay, associated with prediction. What is now interesting is the following. You see here, times this one, and times this one, 
This is Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem for x0 to k minus 1 given d1. Okay? This is probability of this is probability of x up to 0 k minus 1 given all the evidence we have up to k minus 1 and this is the best estimation best estimation at k minus 1. This is the best estimation. Now times the measurement we have times the prediction we have. And some normalization factor here. Usually we are not really worried about this one. Not worried The normalization factor is there to make sure that you know the, the, the summation of all probabilities yield uh, yield is one. For our case, we don't care if the probabilities yield to one. We want to compare the probability of different positions and the position with the best uh, probability is assumed to be the position of the robot. So here. You remember Okay. What we have said, measurement times prediction times the best estimation of k minus 1 is done here. Measurement prediction and the best estimation of. So this one we can simplify. So probability of x up to k is somehow equivalent or can be approximated by a certain factor, alpha, times probability of z k given x k times probability of x 0 to k minus 1 given z0 to k minus 1 times probability of xk given xk minus 1. So this is the, the expression we are looking to determine the best position of the robot up to the time k. OK, I'm sure I'm running out of time. So by this, we come to the, the conclusion of today's lecture. And next time, we will see this uh, expression is a continuous probability density function, quite complex to determine. So we have to find a mechanism to change the continuous probability density function to a, um, distribu uh, sorry, uh, to a, a discrete uh, probability space. Uh, that is where we come to. Uh, particle filtering, important sampling, sequential important uh, sampling that will be the uh, subject of the next lecture. Thank you very much and I appreciate it. Bye from my side.